My name is Paula Propes. I'm an independent scholar and a researcher for Consciously Studio in Southern California. My presentation discusses the concept of aging in the music industry, aging in relation to femininity and media, and how this affects both artists and audiences' mental health in the process. I do want to preface that this is from a Western perspective. Additionally, while these concepts relate directly to femme and feminine presenting or assuming individuals that may or may not identify as women, ageism is not widely studied or talked about in queer cultures. First and foremost, ageism is not a new concept. The term is usually associated with the mid 20th century mu movement in the United States. The Age Discrimination and Employment Act of 1967 was another part of the civil rights movement from this period, which protected individuals over the age of 40 from discrimination in the workplace. Like other movements of that time, this act did not completely protect these individuals and loopholes were exploited. Other acts that would follow were the Age Discrimination Act of 1975, which applies to all ages, and the Section 188 of the Workforce Investment Act of 1998 that protected applicants, employees, and participants in Title I financially assisted programs and activities. From a personal perspective, while preparing this presentation, if ageism is not a new concept, then why was it so difficult to find a clear quote in mainstream media about age? Most people would probably not know the reference of the title of my presentation. The quote comes from Virginia Woolf from her work, A Writer's Diary. I don't believe in aging. I believe in forever altering one's aspect to the sun. Hence my optimism. And to alter now, cleanly and sanely, I want to shuffle off this loose living randomness, people, reviews, fame, all the glittering scales, and be withdrawn and concentrated. After reading the entire quote, Wolf seems to pinpoint aging in the spotlight, people, reviews, fame, all the glittering scales. This presentation takes the perspective that through the production, dis distribution, and ultimately monetization of art, society's obsession with youth stems from a nostalgia for one's past or the promise of retirement when thinking of growing older rather than living in the present. And this creates a form of escapism that advertises to inv individuals aged usually around 18 to 55. I also argue that ageism is a relational concept. If someone only interacts and consumes media from musicians, creators, actors, or other artists from their own generation, there is no comparison to the concept of age. By generation, I loosely refer to the terms created by different cultures to denote these. In the US, these being silent generation, baby boomers, Gen X, millennials, and Gen Z. It's highly improbable for someone to interact exclusively with their respective generation. A lot of knowledge is passed down through generations, including gender roles and how age relates to them. This paper did not start with music. My concept came from rewatching the Comedy Central Amy Schumer 2015 video, Last Fuckable Day. This short satire where Tina Fey, Julia Louise Dreyfus, and Patricia Arquette are celebrating Julia's aging out of the industry. In the skit, she explains that in every actress's life, the media decides where you finally reach the point where you're not believably fuckable anymore. In the video, the older actresses are relieved that they don't have to maintain their current image after they're aging out, and this plays with the idea that their relevancy is not a component of their craft anymore. However, these are also women who hold certain privileges, white, upper middle class, celebrity status, as well as being on the verge of being considered older and not actually older. When I say older individuals, I mean those who are of retirement age or older than that around 55 to 60. But what happens when your persona is intertwined with the presentation of youthfulness and or young sexiness, or maybe the culture or subculture an artist is a part of relies heavily on this idea of youthful rebellion? 
It is no question that human bodies change as they age, but for some, life transitions and growing older also incorporate different experiences that change the way individuals look at themselves, their communities, and the industries where they work. Inside, I always want to wear, you know, the sort of look that I've always worn, but um, I've sort of become, uh, I guess, self-conscious in a way about dressing more my age. And people say, oh no, never dress your age. And um, I sometimes do and I sometimes don't. So it's a toss up. But basically, I try to feel uh, gorgeous and comfortable and sexy, you know, and however that plays out, that's it. The idea that media dictates a person's art and career is obvious when the topic of age comes up. Blondie's Debbie Harry remains an icon in the rock music world, still touring to this day. In this clip from Associated Press at the L Style Awards in 2017, Harry is asked about her personal style at her current age. While Debbie Harry explains that she does maintain autonomy over her own personal style, she does mention the self-consciousness that comes with aging and dressing one's age. She helped shape the New York punk scene and embrace the sexy femininity attributed to her during this time, complete with posing for Playboy magazine. For someone who seemingly maintained control over her personal appearance, it is telling that even she would discuss having self-consciousness over what she wears. But this type of self-autonomy is also part of punk music subculture. It seems that the rebellious nature of this music subculture translates differently throughout different decades of an artist's life. Punk musician Alice Bagg released a song that specifically addressed her own experience of ageism in everyday life with her song, Secret Hoven, which is translated to, She Thinks She's Young. On Alice's Tumblr account, she states that this song was a personal experience. She says that the song was not inspired by an experience I had at a dollar store. A couple of women were talking about me and my appearance behind my back. They assumed I didn't speak Spanish. 
Instead of giving them a piece of my mind, I walked away and let it fester until it became a song about not giving a shit what other people think. In both these accounts, with Alice Bag and Debbie Harry, it is the awareness of perception by other people and one's own self-consciousness that inhibits the artist, or in some cases, produces art. Both women present and are assumed feminine, whether the persona is sexy feminine or strong femme. However, both women have also lived very full lives, whether their personal lives were in the spotlight or not. Nevertheless, we see that older artists are still subjected to the opinions of, to reiterate Wolf, people, reviews, fame, all the glittering scales. While no generation has it easy, it seems that older individuals and younger women generally experience very distinct instances of ageism. For older individuals, it's the media's perception of their relevancy, self-consciousness of aging out of their own identities, or dealing with others when they choose to maintain their self-autonomy. For younger artists, ageism is also intertwined with autonomy as well. A perfect example of this is Britney Spears. Most millennials remember 2007 as the year that Britney Spears had experienced so much that it caused her mental health to decline. While I personally cannot say what happened in Spears's life to cause this distress because I'm not close to the artist nor am I a healthcare professional, her life in the public eye could not have made the matters any easier to deal with. Situation. And she was being followed not just by like one or two photographers at a time, like dozens. I couldn't live under that microscope. That's she insane. She couldn't go anywhere. She couldn't go anywhere. We just need privacy and we need our respect. And, and those are things that you have to have as a human. If someone's following you 24 seven, are you gonna be perfect 24 oh. seven? Absolutely not. Media speculation about her parenting resulted in the LA Department of Child and Family Services to investigate her. Brittany broke up with Kevin Federline after two years of marriage. She was a rapper, right? Yeah. Oh God. Oh, no. Never trust a white guy in cornrows. Was the, fir the first song was called Popa Zhao. Oh my God, I remember, yes. Following the announcement of her divorce, Britney is seen partying it up with none other than Paris Hilton and Lindsay. Spears was a pop princess in the late 1990s and early 2000s, from Mouseketeer mold into a sexual goddess. It's been discussed by avid Spears fans that she had a lot more control over artistic decisions than most individuals her age, especially during the height of her career. However, it's also logical to know that record companies, publishers, and managers have a strong hand in the development of any artist's career. Her public and personal presentations were a performance of sorts, an ideal femininity and sexiness that could be monetized. This is normal in the entertainment industry. Studies such as Cynthia Cyrus's work, Selling an Image, Girl Groups of the 1960s, and Catherine Mizell's book, Idolize Music, Media, and Identity in American Idol, go into great detail about music performance and identities being commodifiable. This directly relates to the relevancy of the artist. And if the artist is younger, growing into their adulthood in the public eye can be even more stressful. Spears was able to overcome this setback in her personal and public life. However, this is not a single instance of popular music. And to be frank, it's kind of a comeback kid narrative. Genres other than US pop have similar artist management and are coming to terms with the distress artists experience when their lives are set at such a young age, only to age out when they reach their mid to late 20s. With the global rise of K-pop come similar issues. As recently as last year, K-pop stars have succumbed to mental distress and taken their own lives. Artists such as Suli and Guhara had most of their young adult lives controlled by industry professionals and were on the road to aging out of K-pop. Tragedies that could be avoided with mental health assistance or appropriate cultural intervening. The purpose of this discussion is not meant to provide answers to how the public and respective artist management protects young artists and older artists. Again, I'm not a mental health care professional, nor am I an A&R representative or manager. This discussion is also not meant to create a negative veil over entire entertainment industries. However, 
by highlighting these very present issues in music industries and considering cultural biases to age, I believe we can start heading in the right direction. If you're interested in any videos or readings mentioned, you may find them listed here. Thank you all for listening.